Coming up on DTNS, Amazon One's palm scanning to be used for concerts in Colorado. Internal Facebook research shows how Instagram affects teens. And Nika and Terrence from Snob OS are here to talk about new Apple iPads, watches, and phones. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, September 14th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. As I mentioned from Snob OS Podcast, Nika Monford's here. Hey, Nika. Hello, Tom. Hello, all. And Terrence Gaines, welcome back. Hey, how's it going? How's everything going with you guys? It's good to have you. Good to have you. I, I'm all uh, I'm all brushed up. We all watched our Apple announcements, ready to talk about those those uh, Apple products. Thanks for joining us again. I love having you y'all coming in every time Apple has uh, something to talk about. I guess if you could call it, Apple had something to talk about. I mean, but they, continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In yeah. theory, yeah. Apple had something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll get we'll get to that. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we were just talking about spoilers, like what makes a spoiler on Good Day Internet. If you want that wider conversation, become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. That is where you can join top patrons such as Mike Akins, Norm Fizikas, and Chris Allen. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Well, South Korea is not taking it easy on Google. Earlier this month, the country passed a law that it also affects Apple, but targeted at Google that stops large companies from requiring the use of their in-app purchasing systems. Now, South Korean regulators have fined Google $177 million for abusing its market share and bargaining power to eliminate competition. The Korea Fair Trade Commission said Google Anti-Fragmentation Agreements, or AFAs, with manufacturers like Samsung and LG prevented use or development of modified versions of the Android OS. The watchdog banned Google from forcing manufacturers to sign AFA contracts and ordered that it modify existing AFAs. Yesterday, Apple released security updates for every Mac, Apple Watch, iPhone, and iPad. Apple credits researchers from the University of Toronto's Citizen Lab for finding a zero-click vulnerability in iMessage. Zero-click meaning if you got this, you got it. You didn't have to do anything uh, to, to make it. Uh, it was allegedly used by the NSO group to place Pegasus spyware on an activist's phone, and it has now been patched. India and Singapore both have nationwide digital payment systems that make it easy to transfer money online. The countries announced that they plan to connect India's UPI system with Singapore's PayNow system by July of 2022. So users would only need an account on one of those systems to send money to users on either system. A press statement said, quote, when implemented, fund transfers can be made from India to Singapore using mobile phone numbers and from Singapore to India using UPI virtual payment addresses or VPAs. Mm, it's the beginning of some kind of worldwide system there. Big for remittances. Xiaomi announced the Xiaomi Smart Glasses concept, just concept, with monochrome micro LED displays that are 2.4 millimeters by 2.02 millimeters, about the size of a grain of rice, that are projected uh, towards your eye, so they look bigger. The brightness is 2 million nits because it is so small. It needs to be that bright to be seen by your eye, especially if there's daylight. Concept would be an independent Android device and not need a phone connection to work. Amazon's Kindle devices are getting a new user interface design for the first time since 2016. The update is rolling out slowly to Kindles released from 2015 and up. The changes include a search bar at the top, replacing the row of buttons, and two tabs, one for home and one for your library. Settings can be accessed with a swipe down from the top of the screen. Speaking of Amazon, uh, their their palm scanning technology is, is finally branching out. See what I did there, palm, a different kind of palm. Yep. Brian Sheen. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, Amazon One is technology that scans your palm to verify your identity. We've talked about this on the show before. Amazon launched it a year ago, and so far it's been used for paying at Amazon stores and more recently Whole Foods stores and select locations, but it can be used for more than just paying for groceries. Amazon announced it has licensed the technology for use by ticketing company AXS. The system is now available for concerts at Red Rocks Amphitheater, that's west of Denver, Colorado, with more AXS ticketed venues to follow. So small rollout, but a rollout nonetheless. You'll need to find an Amazon One kiosk if you want to sign up for it. They're available at Amazon stores, Whole Foods stores, and now outside and inside the Red Rocks Amphitheater. You can then link your Amazon One account to your AXS mobile ID account for your tickets. And then after that, you'll be able to scan your palm to enter an event that you have a ticket to. Makes it a lot easier. 
in theory. Amazon says that this, it stores the secure digital signature of your palm scan, and third parties don't have access to that data, only whether it's a match or not. So that's something that privacy folks would care about. Amazon also says you can cancel on Amazon One ID, and it will permanently delete your palm signature. It won't be stored anywhere. So uh, if Gas South Arena uh, gets this, uh, Nika, are you going to you know, sign up for palm scanning? No. <laughs> I was going to say palms back. That was, that was, that was my first <laughs> yeah, response. And I was palm. like, Oh, maybe a different palm. <laughs> what about you, Terrence? If, uh, if, 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 if this were to speed your way into an event that you wanted to go to, would you sign up? Speed. It would have to be speed, like clear, you know, you think of the airports, you think of like, yeah, um, yeah. pre-check and clear, if it's speed, speed, you know, even faster than Disney, you know, I need to get in, then I would consider doing it. I don't see a major inconvenience of just whipping out my phone and scanning a QR code or whatever the case may be. But if this is going to guarantee that I will get in three times as fast as anybody else, I would consider it. Yeah, it's all in the setup, right? You got to find one of these kiosks, which sure, if you go to concerts a lot, you can do it at one concert so that you will be sped up the next time. Um, uh, but, but I, I don't go to enough concerts that I, 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 you know, I'd probably go to a grocery store. I probably go to the grocery store and register it that way. Cause I, I haven't registered it to pay at an Amazon store. Yeah. So the pre concert part of it, I think is, oh, go ahead, Nika. No, I was going to say pre pandemic, I went to a lot of concerts, but I mean, if you have the cute, the, the, the ticket in your Apple wallet, it's nothing for them just to scan. You already have it pulled up. They scan it. I, I guess it could make it a little bit faster, but I don't know how much more faster it would likely be. I don't know. Yeah, like I, I don't go to concerts at all. And in fact, when I when I heard this story this morning, I was like, who's going to get excited about this? Like, no one's going anywhere. Uh, but that's not really true. There are concerts happening. There, are, you know, sporting events. Uh, people are going through airports. There are all sorts of ways where I see this down the road being like. Oh, remember when we had to fumble through our, you know, purse or backpack or something to get our phone out to, you know, scan our our digital ticket, whatever it may be, and now we don't have to do that. That's where I I don't see this happening tomorrow. Uh, it it it's again a slow rollout. I don't live in Colorado, so I'm not going to go to the Red Rocks Amphitheater anytime soon. But uh, but yeah, I, I think in the future this is this will just be the way. Yeah, and I would just challenge you on people not going out because Monday football, NFL is back, and those stadiums were packed. So people are going places. So that's mm -hmm. true. I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I went know. to a concert, it's a good outdoor. It's a good I went reminder. to an outdoor concert. What was it? Two weeks ago, maybe now. That was my first one in what almost what two years, and the people were there. People, yeah. especially I don't know how it is anywhere else, but particularly here in Georgia, people are out. They're out. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Dodgers games are packed here too. And the Rams. So yeah. Uh, I, I'm with you, Terrence. If it's fast, if it is actually fast, not a, I have to keep putting my palm in the right place or something, you know, like if it's actually fast and convenient. Yeah. I think I might do it too. Wall Street Journal has seen internal Facebook studies that examined how Instagram affects young users. The researchers were con conducted using focus groups, online surveys, and self-reporting, or what they call diary studies. It doesn't mean they studied their diaries. It means they had people write down what they were doing. And then they paired that with Facebook's actual usage data from 2019 and 2020. So these were Facebook studies done for their internal research. The study, according to the Wall Street Journal, found that 14% of UK teens and 6% of US teens who reported suicidal thoughts traced the issue to Instagram in some way. So of everybody who had suicidal thoughts, that percentage said Instagram was a part of the reason they were having those thoughts. 32% of girls and 14% of boys who felt bad about their bodies reported that Instagram made them feel worse. The research found that aspects of Instagram, quote, exacerbate each other to create a perfect storm. It's not any one feature, it's that they feed off of each other. And also that, quote, social comparison is worse on Instagram. Uh, so it's not like, well, social media, that's just the problem with it. TikTok focuses on performance, Snapchat focuses on fun and your face, but puts jokey filters in front of you. But Instagram focuses more on bodies and lifestyles. 
on the whole, most young users can manage the effects. You know, these percentages are not, you know, majority. But those who can't are having a hard time stopping. The research from Facebook said teens told us that they don't like the amount of time they spend on the app but feel like they have to be present. Have a hard time quitting. Instagram doesn't seem to cause problems based on this research. It just seems to make existing problems worse. Associate Professor of Psychiatry at Johns Hopkins, Angela Garda, told the Wall Street Journal, it's the ones who are most vulnerable or are already developing a problem. The use of Instagram and other social media can escalate it. The research was shown to executives within Facebook, including CEO Mark Zuckerberg, in five presentations over 18 months, most recently this spring. And it's difficult for the researchers to get their fellow employees at Facebook to understand the gravity of the problem their research shows. One former researcher told the Wall Street Journal, we're standing directly between people and their bonuses. So it's not just the greedy stockholders and the greedy executives, it's also the rank and file employees who are like, yeah, but my bonus is tied to how well the platform does, so dot, dot, dot. Instagram has tried ways to reduce harm like hiding likes, though Facebook's own internal studies did not find that that project in particular improved life for teens. Instagram launched it anyway because it would be, quote, received by press and parents as a strong positive indication that Instagram cares about its users. So they did it for the PR. Instagram is developing ways to identify people in trouble and nudge them toward more positive content. They're also testing a way to ask users if they want to take a break. Researchers also suggested promoting fun filters over ones focused on beautification. And researchers suggested reducing the exposure to celebrity content about fashion, beauty, and relationships and increasing the exposure to a user's close friends. Uh, Terrence, I know you're you're a father, and, and I don't know if you're, you're teens that uh, have dealt with anything like this, but what did you think about this research? It's off the rails, <laughs> is what I was going to say. I don't know if they're going to be able to put the genie back into the bottle because, you know, speaking about Instagram specific, the word lifestyle jumped out at me, which a lot of teens, late teens, you know, late high school, maybe even college age, are really turning to Instagram for not just feel goods, not just being a part of it, FOMO, actual being influencers and lifestyle leaders on Instagram. So that feeling that need to being present, that need to getting the likes is may not originally start the feelings, the, you know, the negative effects, mm -hmm. but that need to, okay, I need to do this in order to build my brand in order to maybe even, you know, they see, they're seeing artists, they're seeing influencers who are making money on Instagram. You see all the reels, you see all the, you see all the beauty stuff, but a lot of stuff that you also see is people showing you how to make money on Instagram by being an influencer. And I think that is where kids are the gateway drug to where kids are then feeling like they need to be there. And then that's where all the stuff from this research comes in to where body positivity and FOMO and negative feelings, things of that nature, that's where it then kind of takes off from there. Yeah, because being an influencer, that's a career path now for you know kids that are in middle, even as my nephew, he's nine, going on 10. You know, he has a YouTube. He wants to be a YouTube person. All they see this as, you know, traditionally is, what do you want to be when you want to grow up? I want to be a doctor. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a fireman. Now it's, I want to be a YouTube star. I want to be an influencer. So it's not just, like you said, Taryn, it's just one of those things where I want to make myself feel better. It's like, this is the career. This is a career that I want to pursue, you know, as a, a way of to, you know, make a living for myself. I also would love to see this supposed test of a way to ask a user if they'd like to spend less time on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm not I'm not saying it won't happen. And listen, this research, you know, Facebook could say, "Ah, eh, throw it out." You know, we you know, we, we we're we're here to make money and and that's what's going on here. But assuming that there's something to be done that's going to help uh, especially the younger set feel better about themselves and and feel like this is a positive place to be and want to hang out there really because what what's the alternative is you have a bunch of unhappy 
kids or you have uh, kids who want to hang out on Snapchat instead or TikTok or yeah. any other place. It's like it's both of those situations are bad for the company. So, yeah, how do how do you encourage uh, your 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 most active users uh, who aren't happy to not use your product? Yeah. And, and Adam Masseri, who runs Instagram for Facebook, talked to the Wall Street Journal about this. It was one of the interesting things about this story. It wasn't a Facebook didn't comment because it was a leak or Facebook denied it or disputed it. He's like, yeah, this is our research. This is what it says. This is what we're doing uh, to try to combat this. But there are no easy answers. So, no. I mean, if if you assume bad intentions, then it really doesn't matter what they say. But, you know, if you, you know, for a minute, imagine like, OK, what would they say if they wanted to make this product better? Uh, I, I don't know what that would be. Uh, and and I don't think anybody does. I think that's the problem is nobody really knows how do you make a product that's still useful and therefore can make a company money, but is also not aggravating problems like this. It's 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 not a problem that's been solved. And all, not kudos, but at least they don't pretend like they have the solution. Right. Hey, folks, what do you want to hear us talk about on the show? Uh, we love to get your feedback. And one way to let us know is our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Apple announced new iPads, watch, and phones and uh, slipped in an announcement that iOS 15, iPad OS 15, and watch OS 8 will come out to all users, at least of qualifying phones, on September 20th. So let's start with the iPad, sir. Let's do it. The entry-level iPad got a spec upgrade with a faster A13 Bionic chip, a 12-megapixel camera capable of Apple's center stage tracking for video conferencing, and base storage starts at 64 gigabytes for $329. Again, that's the base price. Order now, uh, and you orders are open now, and this will be available next week. So if you're looking at these specs and you're wondering who's this for, kind of feels like for schools, right? Cheap, capable equipment. You got the A13 Bionic, you got the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, you've got the home button, lightning port, uh, support for the first gen Apple Pencil. And yeah, oh, and also for schools, uh, $299. So there's a discount there. So that's another incentive. And uh, Nika, Terrence, what, what do you think about this? I think they were trying to level set the regular iPad with what they have going on with the Air, with, you know, the mini, the one she will talk about next, and the iPad Pro. I think it, like you said, it was an upgrade. It was, to me, a level set to bring the most probably used, probably most purchased iPad up to where the other iPads are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely, you know, we're going to talk about it again in the iPad mini. They had to do something to, you know, really set up the mini, which is next, which argue, you know, you can make arguments, which one is the better device. And I think a lot of people point to the mini, even though it's smaller, it's got a lot of features. So they needed to, like Nika said, level set this. Okay, we really are going to prove that this is the entry level model. And then everything goes up from here. Let's talk about that iPad mini. Uh, they upgraded it to USB-C. It has 5G. The touch ID moves to the top button so they can keep more screen real estate available on the front. It's got a bigger screen and basically the same frame. 500 nits brightness, wider 12 megapixel camera can do 4K video recording, uh, stereo landscape speakers uh, now. So when you set it on its side, you get stereo. Second gen Apple Pencil support and starts at $499. Same as the iPad. You can order it now available next week. Uh, so I don't know, iPad mini gets USB-C and 5G. Is that the headline or, or is this just a, a big phone that can't make calls over cellular as I've seen some people describe it? <laughs> no, I made a comment on Twitter that this will, this device I think would be ideal for photographers who want to lighten their load. They don't have to carry around the big iPad. It has USB-C that should, should connect to most of the newer computer, uh, newer, um, cameras rather, mm -hmm. and it has 5G. So these uh, photographers can do some, you know, editing and upload to Adobe Cloud if they've got all the Adobe prop, you know, the Cloud Creative Suite is the name of it. Um, so, you know, this is a perfect idea for um, a gadget for them if, like I said, they want to lighten the load. Yeah, and like you said before, I think it's really just to distinguish between the 
the typical, I guess, base model iPad, and you now have the mini. And I don't know if it's trying to compete with the, which, what's the new Samsung? They, you know, the commercials with the fold. So I think it's probably around the same size, not from the flip phone, but the mm-hmm. fold phone. It yeah. might be around that same size. So maybe it's kind of trying to make sure they have the market share um, around a, a similar device um, with the other guys. So. The, the the note that, Tom, you mentioned, but I also saw it from a lot of other people, is this is just a huge iPhone. <laughs> and it's not exactly right because, yeah, you do have that restriction of not being able to make calls. But if I were going on a work trip and I was going to be away from my house for more than a few hours, you know, it would be really hard for me to just bring my iPhone with me and get everything I wanted to do done could be could be done in most cases but it would be pretty cumbersome and i'd miss my laptop and yeah the phone call thing aside this is i feel like we're we're getting to this sort of in between gadget where that could be something that gets you through the day or or perhaps more if this was the only device that you had on your person i mean they got 5g versions just give me that the, give me that phone app or or maybe i just use uh, teams or something yeah, like that. Yeah, a lot of other options for phone calls. You know? Yeah, I was going to say the the new FaceTime that you can l- send right. out links for Android and Windows. There you go. There you go. That's right. Good, good point. All right, let's move on to the Apple Watch, which is now the Apple Watch Series 7. It gets a 20% bigger screen. The always-on screen is 70% brighter. Apple made a big deal about that. It uses the bend in the edge of the glass to make the screen look wraparound. Uh, one of the rumor mills about there being uh, flat edges did not come to fruition. Not today, anyway. With the bigger screen, it now has things like bigger buttons and an actual on-screen keyboard. It charges 30% faster. The charging cable, the cable is USB-C. And the Series Watch 7 starts at $329, coming later this fall. Also, a point of contention for some folks, especially developers of watchOS, the Series 3 watch is sticking around at $199, and the SE is $279. So, the bigger screen, getting a full keyboard, seems like a pretty big perk. What does everyone else think? Any standouts? I was... I, I'm not sure how, the, how I feel, because I did not follow my own rules and did not not listen to the rumor mills and they sucked me in and I was just all but convinced and it's my fault. I completely agree. Um, it was my fault that I was just all but convinced that it's going to have a design change. Now they did all the things where they wrap the, the screen goes closer to the corners. They made it appear like, you know, not appear. You actually get larger surface, you know, like Sarah said with the keyboard being able to actually even attempt to type maybe even more feasible. But again, like I said, I was so all but convinced that this was going to be a design change to where the rumor mill turned out not to be true. And I don't know, should I be upset? Should I be let down? Or should I be like, you know what? This is right in line with what Apple normally does. So I should be happy with that. I don't know. And see, I thought I would be, my thought going into this, we talked about on our show, um, is that I was going to buy a new Apple Watch. I didn't get the 6 because I was like, I'll wait and get the 7. And now I'm not so sure um, if it's worth my, <laughs> worth the effort right now. It, it's not such a huge change from, you know, the current watch that I have. So I, I'm leaning towards no. But, you know, it's always still an option, but it did, I did get sucked in as well by the renderings for the more square um, buzzle. So, right. And and something else that popped out. And the expectation of additional sensors. And um, and none of that really seemed to to happen. So, and I was going to say something else popped out that I was surprised it's not going to be available until quote unquote later this fall. So, I'm, I'm curious, mm-hmm. was there supply chain issues that people actually, the rumors kind of mm-hmm. sub- alluded to? substantiate? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's alluded to the fact that their the watch may not be available immediately, and it's not. So, you know, that's a surprise. At the very least, it gives me some time to think about it, to where whether or not <laughs> I actually want to get it or not. I don't have the, I don't have the 
the trigger quick finger. trigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, can yeah. wait a little bit now. <laughs> so that I may end up getting it because I've thought about it and my high came down from the rumor mill. <laughs> and that, that supply chain may maybe why you don't see the the new sensor. They they've been putting a new sensor on it every time, and this is the the first one they've missed in a while. So I I, I could absolutely see that. It's all gonna be the series eight. Don't worry. All the square edges, all that. It's all going to be the Series 8. Uh, they also mentioned, in, in addition to the watch, Apple Fitness Plus getting Pilates, guided meditation, and workouts for snow season later this month. They're bringing group workouts uh, along with uh, 15 more countries and six uh, language subtitles later this year. Um, anybody, anybody excited about Apple Fitness Plus? Uh, I'm looking forward to them adding more music. Um, yes. I do use Apple Fitness Plus. I have a rowing machine, so I kind of use that because it's low impact, full body, all the good things, right? Uh, I'm looking for them to add more music, which is weird because you think Apple Music Apple is music. tied, integrated deeply into this. But the type of music I'm looking for when I want to sweat, Apple is kind of lacking. That just could just mm -hmm. could be my personal experience. But when you think of like a Peloton, you know, they are really promoting these collaborations mm -hmm. with these artists. So if I were looking for something that would just blow my socks off as far as, you know, Apple Fitness Plus would be, I want to see some more variety when it comes to the music selection. Completely yeah. agree. I have the, I have a, a e-bike. I was happy to see that they were bringing some new um, cycle updates. Oh, we haven't got to that part yet. But um, for, for Apple Fitness Plus, I agree with Terrence. The music selection selection is it needs to be beefed up. I have to kind of scroll through quite a bit to look at the playlist before I select a workout to make sure it's something that's actually going to keep me motivated to go through the workout. And, you know, I love the fact that on the screen, you can kind of see all of your metrics. You'll have to keep looking at your watch. Um, that's what I love the most about Apple Fitness Plus, but they definitely, I get they're adding more classes, which is great because I think they do need to expand that, but I think they need to improve their existing um, you know, classes before they probably go too deep into adding more if they aren't going to provide any additional types of of music to accompany the workouts. I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna mention the uh, cycle updates to the Apple Watch, uh, the the better detection for e bikes and 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 fall detection because I didn't think any of us uh, were were gonna be into that. So I'm glad you brought that up, Nika. So that, that's something that 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 you you looking forward to. Yeah, I, I actually am. Um, like I said, I did buy um, a, an electronic bike. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted a Peloton, but I was like, let me see if I can be consistent with a non $2,000 bike yeah, before yeah. that. And um, I toggle between Peloton app and the Apple Fitness Plus app. And it's just the music selection and the the overall vibe of the, the trainers, the instructors mm -hmm. are a lot better over on Peloton than they are with uh, with the Apple Fitness Plus. Because well, Beyonce might be in the audience, so you got to you know up your game just in case. <laughs> 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 All right, let's move on to the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Mini with 6.1 and 5.4 inch screens, respectively. They have the same same flat edge design as the iPhone 12, but some substantive spec upgrades. So let's go through those. The notch is now 20% smaller, although some have noted. It's also a little bit deeper. The screen is 23% brighter than the 12. It also does Dolby Vision, HDR10, and HLG support, has HLG support. The battery on the mini is 1.5 hours longer than the 12 mini, and 2.5 hours longer on the 13 than the 12. That is pretty significant. Cameras also got some love, specifically will let in 50% more light. That makes good night mode photos a lot more capable. On video, you get a new thing called cinematic mode that uses machine learning to simulate what's known as rack focus for cinematographers, so it can change focus from one subject to another in the same shot. It can even tell when somebody walks into frame or turns away from the camera and then change focus automatically. It's sort of like por portrait mode for video. You can think of it that way. And Apple doing its chips. You're getting a six core, five nanometer A15 bionic chip with a two with two high performance and four efficiency cores alongside a four core GPU and a 16 core neural engine capable of 15.8 trillion operations per second. The iPhone 13 mini starts at $699 and the iPhone 13 starts at $799. There's also a new MagSafe case and new MagSafe wallet case uh, that supports Find My for when it, it, it inevitably falls off your phone. 
I didn't realize this was happening to a lot of folks, but apparently, according to my Twitter timeline, it is. Storage options for both are 128, 256, and 512 gigabytes. Pre-orders start Friday with the phones becoming available on September 24th. Yeah, when you add a find my thing to something, it just, uh, to me, that means even Apple knows these things fall off. So that, that's what that told me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I like the fact that uh, Apple added uh, the battery increase. I think that's going to jump out a lot of people. Definitely the camera features are going to jump out a lot of people. We kind of talked about it before uh, earlier in the show about Instagram and a lot of these uh, younger kids are turning to Instagram as influencers and they are shooting, starting to shoot some high quality uh, video with these. I'm, I, I don't know how some of these Instagram people are using these effects. I don't know if it's built into TikTok or Instagram or not, but all that to say, uh, these extra camera features will be definitely beneficial for people who only shoot on an iPhone and are looking for that edge. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's definitely an upgrade. Um, I, I like the new chip features. Um, whenever they do a chip upgrade, it's always, you know, a good thing because it typically does make things faster. It has two HPCs on it, so that's great as well. As Terrence mentioned, everybody is an influencer of some sort now, or everyone's a content creator of some sort now. So it it if you're in the market for a new device, then it's definitely probably worth your time, especially at the price point. Now, if you're a content creator, you definitely want to pay attention to the, the Pro because there, there's some some real high-level stuff here. The iPhone 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max, 6.1 and 6.7 inches respectively, have steel bands. So they're kind of glossy looking, a little stronger. Uh, the A15 Bionic, of course, is in there, except it has a five-core GPU, not a four-core GPU in the Pro. Uh, the display is a Super Retina XDR and Apple finally going 120 hertz refresh rate with ProMotion. They've had that on the iPad. That's now on the iPhone Pro. Uh, that's the one that adapts the refresh rate between 10 and 120 hertz uh, to help save your battery life. So it only gives you that higher refresh rate when you need it. Camera gets most of the love here too. 6X optical zoom across the three cameras, 3X optical zoom on the wide. It can do macro photography as close as two centimeters and all three lenses can do night mode. Uh, there's also something called Apple Photographic Styles that lets you customize HDR with profiles before you take the photo. Uh, like the non-Pro 13s, it can do the cinematic mode, uh, but it can also let you edit the focus from cinematic mode after you shoot, if you're doing it on the Pro. Later this year, it will support ProRes video format. That's used in a lot of professional editing situations. Apple says you'll be able to shoot on the phone in 4K at 30 frames per second and edit all on the phone. An mm -hmm. end-to-end -end work, uh, pro workflow is, is basically how they're describing it. Uh, and that they, they showed professional filmmakers using it exactly that way. Battery life has the same gains as the 13. One and a half hours for the Pro, two and a half for the Max uh, over the previous generation. iPhone 13 Pro starts at $999 and the iPhone Pro Max at $1,099. Uh, both of them available in 128, 256, 512, and a terabyte storage so you had that top that top tier on top of the pro uh same as the the 13s pre-order friday available september 24th and in case you're wondering the iphone 11 sticking around at 499 bucks and the se sticking around at 399 bucks uh but i i mean this to me was much more captivating than the 13 and the 13 mini if you need it not everybody needs all of this power but th mm -hmm. this is this is some some powerful capability here it seems like they're catering apple is catering more to content creators they know that people want to lighten the load they don't want to have to drag all of this equipment out and if you have a terabyte of storage on a phone and the ability to shoot in 4k and edit from the phone i mean it really trims down what content creators need to put their content out Yep, absolutely. And then you add the extra battery, you add the pro motion with the um, with the uh, 120 hertz um, refresh rate up to, I guess I wanted to ask, how do you feel about the up to? I know you mentioned, Tom, it'll only turn it up when you need it. But is it true 120 hertz if 
you are not swiping fast enough or you're not playing some high level game yeah. or you're, no, you know, it, you know, you can turn it off. If you don't care okay. about your battery life, you can just say, give me 120 Hertz, turn off that promotion and just okay. be like, forget about it. So yeah. Uh, it's, it's not like one of those up to specs where they're like, I don't know your cables, your cable internet speed might not ever get there. Like this the is worst. capable of doing it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> the worst. Okay. So you can't turn that on. All right. That's cool. And also the 128 gigs as the base model, because I'm trying to decide right now because I have a um, 12 Pro Max and I got the 256 gig. And when they announced the base model having 128, I'm actually looking in my storage on my phone trying to figure out is, can I go down to 128 if that's going to be the base? Yeah, I guess it just depends on yeah how much onboard storage you need. I'm, I have a pretty hefty iCloud um, storage account and cause I just don't need a lot of, um, I don't know. I'm not taking a lot of high quality video on my phone. That's very long at a time, you know, that would, that would fill, fill it up. I'm sure there are other, uh, examples, but video is always the one that, that gets me. I I've had 256 gigs on my iPhone in several iterations for plenty of time. And with my cloud storage, I feel like I'm okay. And yet I look at one terabyte and I'm like, I want it. <laughs> I, heard I don't you need know it. you needed it, but, but now you do. But I want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm right there with you. Uh, man. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It doesn't sound like any of us are necessarily, uh, in the position to jump on, on getting any of these to replace any, any existing, uh, Apple devices this time around. Ask me on Thursday night. <laughs> or early Friday morning. All right, all right. Uh, how I feel about that. Stay tuned <laughs> for the next episode of Snob OS to find right. out. <laughs> well, if any of you uh, care about the Apple event, don't care about the Apple event, were, were there any standouts that we didn't mention on the show? We'd like to hear your thoughts. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is where to send those emails. Thank you in advance. Also, thank you to our brand new bosses, Edward Madison and Per Jubork, who just started backing us on Patreon. Thank you, Edward, and thank you, Per. Yeah, they. Uh, we had a few people had to drop off, uh, mostly for financial reasons. So you two jumping in kept us at exactly the same number of patrons as last month. And that, if we can't grow, we want to stay at the same patrons. So thank you for picking it up for them. They're having a little hard time. You're picking it up for them. Thank you, Edward and Per. Also, thanks to the Snob OS podcast folks for being with us. It's a tradition for Apple events at this point. Nika Monford, we'll start with you. Where can folks find your work? I am at Tech Savvy Diva everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I have them all, but I pretty much you can find me at Twitter. Excellent. Terrence Gaines, where can folks find what you do outside of being on our show? Yes, you can find me everywhere on the interwebs at Brother Tech, B R O T H A T E C H. And like you mentioned, me and Nika have our own Apple Snobs show. We go a little bit deeper into the Apple conversation and then some. So you can find us everywhere on our show at SnobOSCast. Well, we're live on this show, Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2030 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Join us live if you can. Always good to see you. We'll be back tomorrow with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>